What should we start with, man? With the mugshot. With the mugshot. Oh, that's Trump's memeing mugshot. hard. You guys like that mugshot? It's memeing oh, hard. Fantastic. I love it. Fantastic. Love it. Love it. Good. Love it. it seems like it seems like the mugshot is is like the nail in the coffin for every other candidate now. It, 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 it's really become that popular, hasn't it? They're, tur yeah. they're turning him into a political martyr. It seems. It's true. I think they're I think they're going to have to lock him up if they don't want him to have any influence or win. Like he, it seems like almost inevitable at this point that you know he's got it in the bag with the popularity growing isn't it it was elon musk that said that if the democrats take uh trump to prison if they arrest him he's gonna win by a landslide mm -hmm. i don't know where the tweet is but he said that in very definite words mm -hmm. explicit i think Let's... people are waking up to the bs and this is just another symptom of a much larger problem that everyone's dealing with who do you guys Amen. think is the best candidate for for an American president? Because I'm not convinced that Trump is. Oh DeSantis. yeah, the best candidate, the best candidate, or a disruptor. I think DeSantis on paper is brilliant. He's really good. He's a great executive. But you mm -hmm. want to go? You, if you want someone to go in there with a baseball bat and turn over tables and wreck the whole place, it's got to be Trump. Yeah, he's like a bull in a china shop, obviously. But I mean, like as far as like somebody that's that's better for the country that can you know actually make america great and turn things around and potentially unify people you guys think how, that it's uh DeSantis how do you or... define that because two different people might have two different definitions of exactly the same thing like uh, how do you define america make america great again like uh, well, what does that look like unifying it you know i think that you know when you see a country unified to a degree to any to any degree beyond where it is today because it's completely segregated you know at this point where it's like there's mentally ill people and there's people that aren't mentally ill and they seem to be at each other's throats all the time and it seems like you know like the democrats want to corral you know like the weirdos and cater to the rainbows and people kind of cutting off body parts uh, but there's like reasonable democrat candidates too like isn't uh, kennedy a democrat too like you guys are gonna have to forgive me for being a little bit, you know, dumb here because I don't pay too much attention to American politics, you know, beyond what you know I see on uh, Twitter. But w what's the situation with that party? Like, isn't Kennedy one of their uh, candidates? They won't run a good candidate, though. I think in, a, in an ideal situation, which who knows if it'll happen, like a Trump Kennedy ticket would probably get a very large majority of the vote. But the Democrats will give Kennedy the same treatment I think they gave, although I'm not necessarily a fan of him, uh, Bernie Sanders. Like wildly popular, but yeah, he's not really towing the line. And then they'll they'll give him the boot, or they'll do some uh, some wonky stuff behind the scenes to make sure he never makes it to that level. Yeah, so, they, the Democrats set up a thing called with super delegates. Okay, so it, if if somebody is a populist and is winning, then and they have these things called super delegates, which will get their person that they want to get more votes. So they screwed over Bernie again. It's you know it's a rigged system. Yeah, and the other thing too is who's that in charge who's... then? Is it the is it the like these candidates, these senators, the like? There's all these different layers in American politics. I mean, clearly the president doesn't seem to be in charge because if the president's in charge, then Joe Biden yeah. wouldn't be the president, right? Yeah. Well, there's a whole there's a whole like military industrial complex what I warned about. You know, in that. There's the context itself. So, like, you have somebody like Trump who comes in and disrupts it, but they won't let him get stuff done like, because they think they're the ones in charge, which is why you have the FBI investigating a sitting president, right? Because behind the scenes, they're the ones that are kind of running the government. Like, you can't just come in and fire the entire government and hire a new government. Like, it doesn't quite work that way. So there's only so much the president can do. What about Drake yeah, the Swamp, uh, though? Like, that was his big uh, pitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, he, he, fa he failed on that one. He failed well, on thing, that. I mean, the thing about Trump and Drake the Swamp is that, like, there's a swamp in New York, and then there's a swamp in Washington, there's a swamp in LA, and or wherever, though, right? He knows, he knew New York very, very well. He'd grown up there, he'd been a fixture there for 40, 50, 60 years. Going into Washington, he didn't know anything. He would ask for people's advice, they would just lie to him. And then he couldn't really get things done because he's a, he's kind of a he, he's not an insider in Washington. He doesn't have that kind of political power amongst the people that run things in Washington. Mm -hmm. So, 
15 years <laughs> ago, I would have. 15 years ago, I would have thought Big Big Black was that was a conspiracy theory. But just after what I've seen in the last five years, it's not. And the president doesn't run the government. There's you know there's a cabal and um, state and they decide what you can get done and what you can't get done and if they don't like you they'll use all the machinery of the government um look peter thiel's company got investigated elon musk is now getting investigated by three different government departments why because he's sending rockets to the moon because he makes amazing cars because you know he's bringing thousands of jobs to texas no he's speaking out against the deep state that's why he's getting investigated just like so andrew T- who is andrew the cabal? T- got investigated. Who is <laughs> Raytheon. <laughs> and listen, the big biggest mistake, it's hard to admit your political mistakes, biggest mistake I ever made on the political right was thinking corporations are pure and all they're, all they're out there for is profit. No, they're not. They're there for influence, for power, for money. And if, when corporations get out of control and get into bed with... Cor- with, with... Oh, they got him. Uh, they got did, him. Did... Didn't the left used to be anti-corporation? I, I grew up outside of Seattle, Washington. And I remember the uh, 1999 WTO riots, and pretty much everyone shared that sentiment. Like, hey, we don't want corporations running our policy. And then at some point in the last 20, 25 years, they, they switched all of a sudden. Oh, hang yeah, on. Hang on. Be... 50's back. Did the cabal get you 50? It, the cabal got me. I'm in Florida. I'm I'm in Florida, the man watching all these fi- watching all these fishing boats going out. It's just dead calm, beautiful weather here. Moff will tell you what it's what it's like. Yeah. It's just stunning, and and the Wi-Fi isn't a priority. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you were talking about the you know about the cabal and corporations and stuff like that, and then you dropped. Can you you know can you continue yeah. on with that idea? Yeah, they, look, as I said, when people on the left used to say that years ago, you'd be like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Corporations are pure as the wind driven snow. All they're interested in is making a profit for their shareholders. No, they're not. They're interested now in controlling, dictating. It, it, why do you think, you know, they want to crush Bitcoin? They want to crush anybody who speaks out. They, they're, they're as bad as people on the left always said they were. You know, that's a mistake me and my peeps on the right made was just thinking that corporations are innocent profit driven entities no they're not mm. they're bad influential people with money and power and throughout human history when people get power and money they do bad things with it mm. some of them do good but most of them do bad stuff and they don't like the bad orange one but if, if you want to see the cabal go read the time magazine article that came out after the 2016 election when they literally said we are the cabal we are a coalition of business uh, scientists everybody and they said that their main mission was to take down trump and they wrote an article six months after the fact and published it in time magazine go go search for it <clears throat> so question for you guys there's a there's a general sound bite traveling around the mano swamp about you know the election period where it's like oh it's the election cycle so they're going to start silencing voice in voices that are red pilled or in the mano swamp and that was one of the uh, claims that I think um, Myron made in his announcement video on Fresh and Fit when they got demonetized. What do you guys think of that? Yeah, like, like the U.S. government cares about what Myron is talking about with six hoes from Miami. Like, well, it's not always six hoes. Sometimes it's eight hoes or 12 okay, hoes. Okay, sure, sure. But, I mean, that's just coping mechanism, I think. If the government doesn't really care about that, it doesn't really affect the elections like, like, i don't i don't see where the correlation is with that kind of show yeah and election results like it doesn't make any sense to me i'd rather make the connection between a certain white mask resembling a conical type of figure yeah isn't it interesting that they're that they're starting the rumblings about masks coming back and there was that tsa announcement that alex jones got a a hold of that apparently ended up being true that uh this, you know, starting to go around and, you know, they they tend to do this um, or I mean, they did it last time where it's like, you know, we'll have mail in ballots and, you know, if you're locked it down, a lot and you sense. can't go in, you know, it makes yeah. it a lot easier for them to, um, I suppose, manipulate the outcome, doesn't it? But not only that, it also makes it a lot easier for them to uh, have an excuse to pump money into the economy. Right, everybody's staying at home. Print more let's money. Do some stimulus. Let's print more money. You mm. know, like it's a emergency situation. It makes a lot of sense. And, and if I look back, for me, the the pandemic years were the best three years out of the last six. Mm. They're going to run the same play they did in 2020, I believe. Why, why wouldn't they? It worked. It worked. 
Yeah, they're going to see what they can get away with. That's all it is. Like, let's see how the so. people still yeah, are. Yeah, they'll push so the line a little further it. this oh, time. Yeah. I certainly hope there's so. People, there's people that have a religious fervor for government control. They, they absolutely love it. They think it's the best thing ever because their their policies they don't their policies are so stupid that they want the only way that people will take their policies on board is if they get the government to enforce them, you know, by force of law. And Ma, you're down here in Florida, and when you mention uh, we mentioned masks to people last night while we were out for dinner, people have a visceral reaction down here in Florida to being told what to do. Because people in Florida live on a separate planet during COVID, man. I mean, I was in New yeah. York, so I was in the epicenter of all of it. And so I remember not being able to go outside. I remember not being able to get on the subway without a mask or go train in the gym or anything like that. You couldn't even get into restaurants uh, without preventing some sort of vax card or vax scan. And, and when I moved to Florida and started having conversations with people about this, they were like, yeah, like we were quarantine for maybe a week or two and we just went up to everybody's houses and like barbecued and then it was over and like that was it like they just they didn't even live through it the way the rest of the world did that was the same in southern california too although it's a liberal state but in socal when we got locked down it was just massive parties on the beach house parties like i've never seen before and then they and then they put the kibosh on that and had the police patrolling the beach but for me it was the weirdest damn thing perfect weather year round you're on the beach and not another soul in sight a cop car comes from hundreds of yards away, comes up to me, sir, you need to be social distancing. I'm like, dude, I was social distancing. What What are you doing here? You're the one with the problem. I was, I was out here by myself enjoying my morning, but most surprisingly, most Southern Californians kind of took the same sentiment. It's like, we, we live healthy lifestyles. We're not, we're not going to get sick. And then they, they really brought down the hammer on us. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I really hope you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to watch the full length podcast, you can find that over here, that clips from. If you're newer to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe over here and pin down below in the top comment. You'll find a bunch of useful links to my website, my supplement line books, and a bunch of other stuff. Have an amazing day. Peace out.